No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. Podcast can take mature content. The few simple expressed by the host are not necessarily those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one wrestling podcast on places where you can find people having sex on the internet. The Smack and Raw podcast. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Mad Ritter, and I am here with my co hosts. She is host of the Sheely Showcase Inside the Mind of In the Crowd and Story Time with the goddess of Guap. <laughs> Goddess of the gangland. No. <laughs> no. Cater no. top. <laughs> that one I like. Miss Katie Kinsey, <laughs> baby. I was like, how long are we going to go? Hi. Hello. <clears throat> I'm still sick. You need to, maybe we need to take you, not me personally, I don't want to be involved with this, but maybe like you need to go to the doctor like Zoe did and have three nurses come in with three different needles and just stick you with an antibiotic, one in each leg and one right above the ass cheek and get whatever's going on with you like fixed. First of all, it's bronchitis. It takes a minute and I finished my steroid and (laughs) no. I finished my steroid, and I only have a few more days left of this other thing that they're making me take. I don't remember the name of it. But I'm, I, mean, I sound better. You do sound better. I li- listen, I I can ask around. Don't, I don't know personally. Don't. No, let's calm down here. I know who I can me. ask, can verify, but anyway. I feel like that doesn't need to happen. He... Is the Sultan of Spit or Swallow? Uh, Sultan of Spit or Swallow? I'm all tongue tied now because of the uh, goddess of that guap. Uh, God, <laughs> uh, 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 I can't even talk. Fuck it. Sultan of Spit or Swallow, Daddy Delgado, my friend Vince. Daddy's home, Matt. <laughs> and that poor up poppy race is still tied. You guys are you guys are doing great though. Vince there is no. There is by no one next week because Katie won't be here. There is you, no. You'll race. be in the lead next week. No, you no race. I'll take that lead. No race. <laughs> No race whatsoever. No. Maybe in a sprint. Goddess of that gawk. Okay, I got it out. Don't. Don't. (laughs) I I had to say it because I was fucking it up. Write that down. That could be a title. Am I actually writing that down? What? (laughs) Yes, please actually do write down Goddess of that gawk. (laughs) <laughs> not even like 15 minutes into the live stream we already got a contender for it we're not even three minutes into the fucking episode true what do you mean our our our, our co-host our, our our guest host oh i was just about to talk shit i was just about to talk shit about how our guest host hasn't even made it we might already have a title thank you amani we appreciate it uh and then look okay. here he is ladies and gentlemen proprietor vince proprietor means someone that runs something so like i would not be the proprietor of creation world that would You'd be, be the proprietor so of all things Pornhub. no i all also creation do world. not oh, run all things Pornhub. That, that that's still incorrect <laughs> however he is the proprietor of rivet city radio host of bot spots and chair shots he is a chef by trade a mark by choice and because i wasn't prepped one half of the DP bros. Always got that right. on me. Vin, listen, Travis has not booked us together on the creation conversation so we could have our DP bros time in a long time, which is why I hit you. I was like, I feel like it's been a long time since I got to do a show with you. I'm used to I'm used to getting it 
a little more often from you than like once every two and a half, three weeks. So I wanted you know I wanted what to it see is? a beautiful face again. You know what it is? Bridget Amara. <laughs> Bridget Amara. Like they're like, I need Will on Creatia. And they they jeopardize it. They just take all the time. <laughs> by the way, by the way, shout out to shout out to Jesus. I was I was wondering where he was. Vince does have a fancy new set. I like the new setup, Poppy. Yeah, he didn't even didn't even acknowledge Allison, like complimenting your new thing and everything. I well, did, I did. Up. I'm just that's fucked up. <laughs> How appropriate is that, Jax Bo? How appropriate is that? He just I mean our blues. He DM me, he DM me an AEW CM Punk. Uh I'm assuming it's a statue, but it's him in his cross like position holding the mic. Mm. On an, a piece of an AEW toy ring, looks really. Oh, okay. Looks really dope. Um, I know that's what you sent me. Um, also, he he said that we all need to go out and touch grass, and I told him that I have fucking allergies, so like that's not a thing. <laughs> I mean, I can like touch the grass for like a minute or two, but if I'm there too long, then yeah, I start getting itchy and I gotta go home. Dude, this is beautiful. I talk shit about Will not being here yet. He shows up. Vince was talking shit about Jesus before the show started. Jesus showed up. Yeah, I was wondering where he's been. I, I didn't shit. talk shit. I was wondering where he was. I'm like, where's Jesus at? I don't talk shit. Allison got her Dickasaurus Rexes back? <laughs> I can't tell what that one is. That's uh, okay. Tim have... Ryback. Okay, I was gonna say I got bad eyesight. I can't fucking see that. He, uh, Vince said, "Where has Jesus been?" I haven't seen him in the chat in a long time. And then, and boom. I said, "Jesus likes me more because he shows up on my show." Apparently, no. he prayed for you because you know if you want to see Jesus, you have to pray. <laughs> Allison, you are here for every show, and Devin, the tribal chief, is here. Even though you know he's on the wrong side of this argument about <clears throat> Cody and Roman. Cody. Um, Jack Spo's here. We we got a good crowd tonight. Yeah, shout out to Allison. Thank you. I already put it in the chat, but thank you again for the set. Like I, I was gonna answer, but then Melissa FaceTimed me in the middle of the show, and I'm just like, you know, it's the fiance I have in to the see middle what. of the show. In the middle we've of the show. On we've been live for 10 minutes. I know Not like we've been live for 10 minutes, but we've been live for 10 minutes at twitch.tv slash creation world. Where if, ladies and gentlemen, you have Amazon Prime. You have Prime Gaming. You link your Prime Gaming to your Twitch account. You get a free sub every single month. You can give to your favorite content creators. Speaking of your favorite content creators and people that you can subscribe to on Twitch, Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay and the She Leads Showcase been accepting subs since 2005. Uh, so go sub there. If that's not your cup of tea, well, you're a fucking idiot. But if it's not your cup of tea, maybe, you know, you like variety, the spice of fucking life. Rivet City Radio. Off the top media. Botch spots and chair shots. Uh, eventually, I'm assuming the boss bitch trivia will come back on Thursdays because my Thursday nights have been kind of empty without it, but it's a thing that exists. So many shows, so much variety over there for what everyone... What? Your Thursday Chilean nights on are Thursday. a empty? That's, that's fun. My Thursday nights. You're my Thursday like afternoon. Whatever. It's night for me. Okay. Well, we've established that central what, standard yeah. time is the real time. <laughs> Not here nor there. <clears throat> you can sub to botch bots and share shots. Who you should really sub to is Creation World because you're already here watching us. You already fucking love me. And you think I do a fantastic job. Look at that. She loves me too. Um, almost as much as she loves Travis, who is the reason why all of this exists and why I'm plugging all of this fun shit. Yep. Kevin the Tribal Chief also does a bunch of cool shit on Twitch. So, like, if you don't like white people, yeah. <laughs> up. Like, I know a lot of white folks and Vince here. So, if that's not your thing, go check out Devin. He's got you. Uh, we love our boy from Chicago. So, go support somebody on Twitch and use that free sub. If you're not on Twitch, you might be on YouTube.com slash Creation World watching us live where it is free to like, to subscribe, to comment. Will, what does that do? Boosts the algorithm and it helps find new listeners. That is correct. Katie, why would I be interested in finding new listeners? Well, because you're a variety of things, you know. As we've discussed many a time, you're a whore. You're a, a hoe. Again, I still can't oh. capacity. Thank oh. you. Um, and I think it was last week or the week before, you're also a slut. 
all of those things, but all of those things for your entertainment, not just like sexually. I'm I'm a one woman man now. Um because she'd castrate me if I wasn't. I am here for your entertainment, to whore myself out, to slut myself out, to hoe myself out, to entertain you, whether it's doing whatever I'm doing now, uh, the rack, taking my shirt off, lifting weights, talking shit, making porn reference, whatever it is that makes you giggle and want to come back, that's what I'm here to do. So to help expose me and slut me around to as many people you know as possible, you got to hit that like, you got to hit that subscribe, you got to leave a comment. Vince, what does that do? What? I you're so you gotta do all of those things <laughs> to get me some exposure, to get us some exposure, to help people enjoy us as much as you do. Mom, Spread you dads, out like grandmas, herpes? grandpas. No, no. Like Listen. gonorrhea? No. Like HIV? <laughs> no. Why would you don't you want to get spread around like an STD? No. No. Because that's not a positive thing, and we're a positive place for positive people who like sex positive positivity and wrestling positivity and positively want to, you know, experience this. And I, I don't know a lot of people that positively want to experience an STD. Um, but thanks for that, Vince. No, <laughs> While you're watching, flick that bean, hit that notification bell up top. Uh, get notified every time we go live, Monday through Friday, for what show, Vince? Uh, the Creation Conversation. Correct. You know, if you stall and drag this out, the show's going to go longer. So let's try this again. Every Saturday, 11 p.m. Central for what show, Vince? Uh, the Smack and Raw podcast. And every other Sunday for what show, Vince? Uh, the show in which you get off. Getting off. That is correct, which will be back next Sunday with Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. And if he has time, possibly Will Gray, covering No One Lives and Incarnate. Uh, we will have our definitive rank of <laughs> WWE horror films by the end of that. Um, so come check us out then as well. Uh, I think that's it. So I'm pretty sure it's Katie's turn to take over because we got some news. We got some rumors. We got some things to talk about. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, actually. Uh, I had a whole post-it note of shit. Jesus. And it, I know. It's crazy. Crazy things have happened in this week of things that have gone on. Um, the executive producer of Stardom got fired and people were like, what the fuck's going on? That happened. He, That was a thing. He, that happened on like Wednesday, we'll say. And then the next day, they're like, LOL, hey, guess what? Scott Demore gets fired from TNA. So like, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on. Everyone's so, dropping like flies. I have no idea who the executive producer of Stardom is. I did hear there's an issue between Stardom and New Japan and that whole thing where <laughs> they were having fun that Will probably knows more about than I do because he's smirking down there like <laughs> a devil. I just like the name of the parent company, Bushy Road. There you go. Bushy is the trick, but but Bushy Road. It no, Bushy means. Road. No, you said it correctly. Don't fuck it up no, you're, now. You're right. You're right. The first Bushy time. Road. Um, ultimately, the long and the short of it is, is I would compare it to the NBA WNBA issue, and I don't necessarily mean to tie basketball in here, Matt. I know that's not your your cup of tea, but like the WNBA has for a long time fought to get closer to equal pay for what the NBA is making. But for obvious reasons, they don't pull as much in ad revenue and stuff like that. So they're not as able to pull the contracts the way it does. Pause. Uh, it's because people suck. Men specifically, men who think that sports should be dominated by men. My wife and I were actually talking about this outside because I just got done watching the Marvels. Uh, and oh, okay. I heard a lot of negative reviews about it. And it was fucking great. And it Travis great told movie. me it was fucking great. It was really good. Captain Marvel also got a bunch of shit reviews. That movie was fucking fantastic. And it's a bunch of these nerdy ass dudes on the internet who don't like seeing women in roles of power and women succeed and female superheroes if they're not in porn parodies, which we may or may not cover over at pornhub.com slash model slash creation world. If you want to go there, not the porn parodies specifically, not superheroes. No, that might be something coming down the line later. We'll talk. Anyway, I follow. Okay. Like, There's so much going on. Men suck. And the reason that women don't get the recognition in wrestling and in other sports that they do is because of these 
toxic men who don't want to see women succeed at the same level of men because they feel like women should be beneath them. That is not what we are here. So if you're one of those dudes and you're watching, this is not the show for you. Will, please continue. Well, so the long and the short of it is New Japan gets better TV deals and they get more ad revenue and they get more of the things that allow them to pay their talent more money. Stardom mm -hmm. issue, Stardom's issue is they wanted to pull a bunch of money from Bushi Road to pay more people in Stardom. Bushi Road was like, but Stardom's not pulling the money that New Japan pulls, so no. So from a business aspect, I understand it, but again, I don't necessarily know that it's an issue with Stardom because a lot of the women that we love watching in the States had runs in, came from, and did great things over in stardom. I don't think the issue is the product in stardom. I think it's the mentality of fans as to why they won't get behind things like this. I mean, who do you know that watches WoW? Outside. Crickets, uh, right? Nobody. Nobody watches WoW. There is a women's promotion in North America that features all women's wrestling. And of the four of us in our large reach across the IWC and all of our friends, none of us can think of a single person that watches and covers and talks about wow probably because it's a women's promotion and a women's only promotion and it's not getting the notoriety and the push that a man's promotion would because of that exact mentality that we just talked about yep now scott demore uh speaking of obscurity pulled impact out of obscurity busted his ass took them <laughs> from the ledge that they were about to jump off of and brought them back into semi-mainstream notoriety. And as soon as he got them to where they actually seemed fucking valuable, Anthem came in and said, all right, good job, bye. Yeah. Didn't keep him on as a booker. Consultant. Head of creative, nothing. I don't know who the fuck from Anthem is going to run a wrestling show. I don't remember what his name is. I didn't take a I didn't take a picture of the tweet, so I don't remember. The reason you don't remember what his name is is because nobody knows who the fuck this guy is. Well, that's also very true. This is a very true statement. Uh and that does suck because Scott Demore was actually like from what I could tell really well liked backstage and like actually like helped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that does actually really fucking suck. I guess he wanted to like buy impact and they were like, LOL no. I and heard it was considered, fight. but not seriously considered. But it was a legit offer that was on the table because I think, if I read correctly, he knew like a week in advance, maybe even two weeks in advance, that he was gone before it was actually announced. And he knew he was out the door, so he's like, let me buy TNA from you. And they considered it for a minute, and they're like, nah. Uh, we'd rather try to milk it. this cow as much as we can and squeeze it dry. Well, Will, again, when it comes to things like this, you're a little more in the know than I am, but my understanding is that Anthem wants to bring TNA more into the fold of their product. Um, they own a bunch of TV stations and record labels and all sorts of shit, and they want to bring uh, TNA into the business aspect more so of what they're doing. They call this streamlining that, um, but again... You build up this notoriety, you finally get this company back to where people are really talking about it and excited about it, and then the person that did that, you fire. I don't know how how really you know great of a move that is or in good faith that is with the people who loved the show and were loyal fans. You're muted, sir. If there was ever a point when I would tell wrestling fans there needs to be some time to let this breathe, this would be now. Uh, because there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes and a lot of people talking about exactly why Scott was let go. Uh, the number one reason being that he wanted to buy the company. And when they told him he couldn't, it was the, the going a different direction than what Anthem wanted to take it. Um, but there is also some stuff about him and Giselle's relationship. There is stuff about him and relationships with other people in the past. There, these are all allegations right now. But what I'm saying is this is one of those we need to let this breathe before we decide whose side we want to take in this because maybe yeah. not everybody's hands are clean. 
which is why I bring yeah. you on because again, Probably. there are things that I haven't heard that I don't know that Katie was clearly surprised about. I don't know, Vince, did you know any of that? So I heard that supposedly, like, like don't be surprised if like some allegations come forward and that that's if that's the reason why he was actually let go. Nick Houseman has reported that him and Don Callis, Houseman put his initial report out in 2020 that him and Callis had allegations against them in the TNA locker room or the Impact locker room at that point. Um, and now he's bringing it back to light because he was like, well, you know. What's with all these fucking partners in crime? Like, you can't just go out and do fucked up shit by yourself. You got you to gotta have a tag team partner to do fucked up shit with in wrestling? Like to do hood rat shit with my friends. <laughs> Don needs, Don that's needs, not hood rat uh, shit. That's gross shit that they're doing. Though. There's a difference. There's a line. Callis needed, Callis needed Scott. Vince needed fucking uh, Johnny Ace. Johnny Ace. No. Oh. Be a terrible right. person on your own. Yeah. Like. Yeah. If the things about Demore end up being true, I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised. At this point, everyone's like Matt said, everyone's hands are fucking 30 in some way, shape, or form. Higher ups. Fuckers. Anyways, I'm just just gonna bust through the rest of these because there's not a whole lot to deal with. Bust out. (laughs) Bust down, Tatiana. Um Brian Pillman, not Junior, not Lexus King. Brian Pillman will have merchandise in WWE now. Uh, WWE came to an agreement with the Pillman estate. His daughter, Brittany, I believe her name is, uh, posted about it. So we'll be getting that stuff very soon. That's awesome, especially with Pillman Jr. being in WWE now. Mm -hmm. That's a good step in the right direction there. Um, Cash Wheeler will have a hearing on February 20th <laughs> um, about his aggravated assault charge from God, last year at this point. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody has from his team or AEW has said anything. Ow. That'll be fun. Liv Morgan's charges were dropped, though. She paid like 500 bucks and she's Gucci. So It's fucking weed. Like it's people. it's weird. It's yeah. that that whole thing was blown out of proportion and stupid anyways. Facts. <laughs> uh WWE Speed will be <laughs> on Twitter. Who saw that? Is... No, no, hold on. Stay well, with me here. What? <laughs> WWE Speed, you got a hookup for that? No, I do downers, Matt. I stopped doing uppers in my twenties. Jesus. Fair enough. <laughs> WWE Speed will be exclusively on Twitter and it'll be five minute matches. Uh, they started doing some of these uh, uh, live shows and like before like Raws and Smackdowns and stuff a few months ago, but they officially announced it during that press conference that I had to watch after the fact. <laughs> Is WWE Speed going to be in direct competition with AEW Coke? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh man! And NWA Matt, see what you're doing. And then, yes, and NWA Matt. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of competitor uh, competitors here we got going on. Jesus. Um, Dark Side of the Ring Unheard will be a podcast coming out. I don't remember when they said uh, it's gonna dive into like hours of unseen footage, testimonials, and a bunch of other stuff that we didn't get to see on the show. So that'll be fun, especially because the new season comes out next month. I think, maybe okay. I don't know. Uh, this is j- mainly for me. Sol Ruka returned at an NXT house show, and she's clear for in-ring competition. Let's fucking go, Sol Ruka, baby. She was gone for like ten months. We missed her. Oh, that was that's why I don't know who that is. I wasn't watching NXT. <laughs> I was like, uh, what is this? Will Sol Ruka? But my my she favorite thing so though. My favorite thing, Will, is how I don't know if it's our influence or just what, but slowly things like NXT or 
a, a, a certain guy cutting promos you just you've come around to after you've been against it for so long it's a beautiful look i i used to say will osprey was like a wish version of ricochet and now i say osprey is one of the best workers on the planet last year fucked me up wrestling wise it got weird for a minute <laughs> <laughs> just a little weird you felt Not some things um sonia deville and her partner tony got married today this is a win for me i'm so happy for them this this, this is for me only were you i don't at, care what anyone else's opinions were are. you at the wedding were you were i you... fucking wish i would have been it they looked beautiful absolutely yep. stunning people took pictures like people.com and actual people at the wedding, but like people.com <laughs> covered it. It was great. Maria Menudos was their officiant. She looked beautiful too. Interesting. <clears throat> oh, highly recommend if you haven't seen the pictures, go look at them. They're gorgeous. Uh, and the last them. thing, again, um, Maurice, if nobody saw, to, I think today posted that she has to have a total hysterectomy, which for those who are unaware, uh, that's basically when you take all of your lady parts and they get taken out of your body. So no ovaries yeah. and fallopian tubes and things that men don't know about gone. So like Vince, when you picture a woman, you, you just picture the entrance, right? But like beyond the entrance, there's a bunch of stuff connected there. That's actually kind of on the outside for dudes. Like, if you were to take your balls and penis and shove it back up inside you, that's kind of where the rest of the women's reproductive system is. Your testicles are basically the ovaries, stuff like that. And they're taking all that out. It's like internal castration. Yeah. So I just love she... the look on Vince and Will's face right now. They're just dumping. I'm just waiting to I see mean, what he has to say. I, I, I can't even see if that should I'm, I'm still waiting for first. the why. Oh, like, so um, it is for an actual, like, legitimate reason. So she had, I think she said, 11 things uh, removed from her ovaries, and they thought it was endometriitis. It was not. It's actually um, Sarah's borderline tumors, and they got it pre, uh, very, very pre cancer, cancerous. Um, that's why she's having a total hysterectomy to get rid of everything. And she went through, and this is why, and like she posted about it, which it, just go read her Instagram post. She talks all about it and she explains everything beautifully. People need to start listening to women in general, but specifically when it's like our bodies on the line, we know something's wrong. Listen to us. Well, that's actually, cause was that your last bit of news? That's a great plug-in because cause and effect, right? I sat here and I said, you know, we support women. We support women's wrestling and women's mm -hmm. athletes and blah, blah, blah. And if you don't like that, mm -hmm. then you probably shouldn't do it. And, like, immediately three or four people dropped out of the chat. So, like, fuck them. But, um, yeah. look, we just lost another one. I said it again. Like, cause and effect. Um, oh. It is what it is. Uh, yes, a true champion. Uh, okay. But we also were support women's reproductive rights here we you know i live in a state that allows women to get taken care of and get the medical health care that they need for situations like this thank god um and don't force them into situations that are dangerous and life-threatening for stupid reasons um we had shirts that we were selling across platforms between me and katie uh every search or shirts she sold uh, went to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Every shirt that we sold, the proce uh, proceeds went directly to the Women's Reproductive Rights Assistance Project. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I fucking mean. Nobody listens to... Nobody listens to women, specifically doctors. Women don't even listen to women. Well, that too. Yeah, it's it's terrible, but like I'm glad that in in this scenario, Maurice said I know something's wrong, and went to find somebody who would listen to her and did help her and is making sure she's okay. 
she's she's got two little baby girls at home like she's mm-hmm. good she doesn't it, like and for those unaware obviously if you have a total strict you can't have kids anymore so she will not have to go through that anymore and hopefully that clears everything up and she's good yeah i agree uh, honestly, I thought you were going to tell me Maurice was announcing your OnlyFans. This is like the exact opposite of that. So, a complete opposite. Um, yeah. So, either but, go read it. Something that you can find on OnlyFans is the next segment, the biggest segment, the segment we are best known for, and that is spit or swallow. <sighs> Terrible. <laughs> That's one Segways a segue. Um, seeing as I know that he wants to get it off of his chest because he likes to come on here and do it and that they had a TV show air this week, Will Spitter Swallow funny you say that (laughs) because my first spit of the week and I'm just going to go ahead and get the one spit out of the way for it because it was my favorite show of the week it was the best 48 minutes of wrestling this week except for this one piece, okay? And the CW needs to get their shit together because I was about 38 minutes into the stream. They start the ultimate match of death. EC, what is this? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Continue. They started the ultimate match of death with EC3 and Cardona. And when EC3 got color, they shifted to black and white. Mm. They killed all the color for the stream. Damn. And finished the whole show in black and white. And then I... Which like... So then I messaged my guy in the NWA and said, what the fuck was that? And they said, yeah, that's a CW thing. That's stupid. Yeah. Like, CW shows... I know, I that's mean, what I thought, like, too. Yeah. Like, fucking Vampire Diaries was on that goddamn channel. And isn't there, isn't SmackDown, yes, maybe possibly going to CW as well? Uh, NXT is already signed. SmackDown's going to USA. Yeah. Okay. NXT's going. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so I spit the fact that halfway through the show, they split, went to a black and white broadcast because one of the wrestlers started bleeding in the middle of the match. Listen, black and white is only good in wrestling for Tony Storm and in other places on black.com or black raw. Uh, nowhere else. Or at the end of my TV minus Terry and or phone. <laughs> See, I'm not even I'm not even about the black and white for the fucking NWO entrance. Like I've been watching old school WCW. They didn't do that. That was a WWE thing. Really? Yeah. I never watched WCW. If you want, I can get you all caught up. You can come join us for Bash at the Beach next weekend. We've only got like nine shows to watch to get caught up between now and then. Alan said, so it's like Kill Bill. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Kill Bill. I love Kill Bill. I think Travis has been hard set on never having me on the show. We've never talked about it because you never showed interest in it because you don't watch I did show in, I did show interest in it, and I told him, and I told him that. I was like, well, when am I going to be on the show? And he's like, never. Well, he's going to say that regardless. Yeah. Because it's Travis. But you know who's not Travis? Katie. Katie Spitterswallow. Hey, that's me. That's me. Um, (coughs) I'm... Where are I? I'll start here. Uh, I'm going to swallow DIY winning the Fatal 4-Way Tag match on Raw. Hell of a fucking show. Special shout out to the Creeds because the Creeds are fucking legit always. And with that, because we lump things together here, the match on Smacketh Down between DIY and British Strong Style minus Trent Seven it was so fucking good. I was just like, ah, oh, NXT on SmackDown. What a good time. Put it down. Put it down. Um, I. <laughs> enjoyed both those matches so fucking much just love a i don't want yeah i'm surprised he's <laughs> I was gonna ask. shout like... out to jaylan took care of it <laughs> uh 
I'm I'm just hoping Judgment Day loses these titles or we, they get split because I'm over this. And this proved oh, no. why. Because you had four great tag teams fighting on Raw, and then last week you had four great tag teams fighting on SmackDown. I love tag team wrestling. Especially Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa and Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. Breaks, so, big strong style them. boys is what I call them. I just call them very strong style still. And they're all fighting for an opportunity at a mid-ass tag team. Damn. Y'all disrespectful. But whatever. Hey, listen, I, I listen, I am all for bisexual undertaker. It's Finn Balor I have an issue with. Yeah, bisexual yeah. undertaker is my favorite thing anyone's ever called Damian Priest. And he <laughs> responded today. He was like, What the fuck? Because someone you can said he also write that down, down like, for a title. Bisexual, bisexual undertaker. I'm yeah. it down. Okay. No, I'm I'm with Katie. I, I had that as one of my swallows as well. I actually had that as my fourth swallow in my, in my order. Um, big strong style boys versus DIY slapped. I thought it was the best match on the entire episode of SmackDown. The fate of four way last week was great. The fate of four way on Raw was even better. Like crazy, crazy spots. It was all great. And we're talking about tag team. Like I didn't even see this on SmackDown. I saw it on Twitter. The, later earlier on today but there's a brand new tag team on smackdown they got formed between ashanti diadonis and cedric alexander and i liked the little video package it seemed like they had some like chemistry going together like two best buddies like in a buddy cop movie i mean intrigued to see where they go with that so at least they're using ashanti and cedric so that's not even mentioning the fact that we still have aop we still yeah. have uh, the Street Profits. Street Profits. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Indusheer is floating around somewhere in catering. They're there somewhere. They're there. Uh, what other tag teams are we from? Not, well, fingers you have... crossed that we'll see an American Alpha return at some point once. Alpha Academy is still there. Close enough. Ned, Ned, listen, like... I love Otis. Otis is not Jason Jordan. He is not. I miss JJ. True. Listen, American Alpha was like... That yeah, pretty deadly exists. Oh. <laughs> Their vignette on Smite though is hilarious. <laughs> bisexual been... DX exists. <laughs> I, I thought there were 70s DX. No, they're they're, they're like seven. They're, so they're like, like we 70s. have we have the we, we have the attitude era and then we have the ruthless aggression era and we have the PG era. Is this the bisexual era where we just make all of the <laughs> all of the attitude era wrestlers bisexual? So like Pretty Deadly is bisexual. Sean and Triple H. Damian Priest is bisexual. Undertaker. <coughs> this is my that. era. Fuckers. This is mine. I Who else this. would be a bisexual version <laughs> the, of that? The Katie era. era. Katie. This is the kid. I don't care about Ter- Taylor Swift's era tour. This is Katie's <laughs> era now. Oh, man. Swifty Bowl tomorrow. Um, you mean Vince, better Bowl swallow. Um... I'm just going to go ahead and spit and swallow this all together because we do things in lumps now. Because uh, I'm split on how I felt about it because there were parts of this that I enjoyed and parts of it that I didn't enjoy. I'll start with the positives. Swallowing everything Cody, Seth, Drew, Rock, Roman from this past week. Uh, DM Hunk got a brand new shirt where he continues his player hater of the year campaign <laughs> versus uh, CM Punk. Love to see it. Uh, Drew's whole plea to Cody about finishing the story. Like, like, like it was hilarious. Drew is on another level of entertainment. He is literally the funniest guy. Uh, Cody versus Roman. It got it got confirmed. Oh, yeah. Drew also clapped back at Seth, which I fucking loved. And I talked about it on Get Show. Where Seth's like, oh, how did you even think it was going to be me versus you for the title at Mania after you take out Punk. Like, I already beat you multiple times. Drew's rebuttals with, yeah, but there was outside interference. It's not my fault. Plus, didn't you lose to Cody three times in a row, and here you are begging him for a match at WrestleMania? Fucking love that shit. Uh, I love that he's like, oh, like, the DM Hunk, uh, uh, calling himself DM Hunk. That's a t- that's a, That should be a title contender as well, DM Hunk, because I love it. You have um, said it like 15 times in the span of 10 seconds. Can you tell I have a fixation for it? Um, that's a big, meaty man. I love them. Uh, like I said, Cody, Roman, main event confirmed. 
based off of the presser. And then Triple H later on and reconfirms it on SmackDown saying that's the main events. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks in the locker room. They need to, other people try to like assert their authority, even though they don't have any. They need to know their role, throwing all the subliminal shots at The Rock. Um, obviously, the back and forth with, with Rock, Roman, Cody, Seth was fun. But my only spit with that is that I felt like, especially at the presser, Roman didn't look as well after like Cody came out and Rock confronts him. And then Rock's running around all grumpy and pissed talking to Triple H. It just kind of felt like Roman was just kind of like following him like Jey Uso used to follow Roman. So it's like Seth is bisexual, macho man. It goes to my... All right, listen. <laughs> this is smacking and Raw. This is not the Sheely Showcase. This is not question of the week. Uh, how That's many so bisexual funny. wrestlers uh, we can create. This is not a sweaty session. But I do encourage this to continue in the chat. Yes. So please give us all your picks for bisexual, bisexual versions really? of old school wrestlers I like in this. the chat. Love all this of this. So um, but yeah, all of that like is the stuff I didn't like. I thought that Seth, like ex except for the part where he goes in and defends Cody's honor after Rock slaps Cody, I felt like he just was kind of like in the background and was left looking like side characters in this story. Roman as well. Nitpicking. Nitpicking is all I'm doing. That's why it's this minor spit in the whole encompass of this giant like load that I'm swallowing. Um, I still need that little plot hole of last week explained as to why Cody was like, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after that title, Roman, just not at WrestleMania. And then at the presser, he's like, I'm coming for you at WrestleMania. It's like it's a minor plot hole. If if Bully Ray can sit there and talk about how he needs an explanation for a tattoo, I can sit here and explain and ask for an explanation. Don't be like Bully Ray. Why not? <laughs> and uh, my last people to be like my last final two things in that big giant load is that I'm spitting if they end up doing Cody versus Rock or Rock versus Roman in one of the two nights and take one of the the, the, the main events from the woman because either Bailey and Eo deserve to main event or Rhea versus whoever her challenger is deserves to main event. Specifically, Bailey, she won the Rumble. She should main event. Cody won the Rumble. He should main event. And shout out to Punk for acknowledging and respecting Bailey on his uh, social media. Yes? No, that's, that's just a huge proactive spit. Like, normally I'm like, I spit this, but... I may take it back later. You're like, I'm spitting something. Oh, yeah, that yeah. That's a preemptive like That's in a advance. preemptive spit. Sorry, I forgot to mention that's a preemptive spit. I will go ahead and swallow it if it doesn't happen. Now, uh, the one thing that I'm gonna contribute to the podcast, other than asking you guys to spit or swallow, since we have three guests, and I forgot to do that last time we ran a little long, is uh you guys can go check out at Smagnaron TikTok. I talked about it. Um, I want to be worked in wrestling. Right. Yeah. And they worked me whether whether this was the plan all along, whether it was a pivot. I don't care. I really don't. Because when Cody came out and he said, I'm coming for you, just not at WrestleMania. And then he brought out the rock and we had the stare down the Rocky sucks chance, like the, the logical shit, not not the other shit, the toxic shit that everyone's talked about that we've talked about with terrible fucking people running people off social media and all sorts of shit. But like the Rocky sucks chance and the callbacks to like 1997 WWF and all that. Um, the booze, the, we want Cody stuff, whether it was passed out from WWE or whatever the case, all of this leading to the presser, which I honestly, like, I don't need a story Vince because in my mind, it makes sense. He said he had counsel. His counsel was the rock. The rock said, Hey, let me handle this. I got it. And then The Rock went out at the press conference and pulled up the fucking family tree and said, there's only one dominant royal family. And Cody's like, all right, listen, I'm not going to let you just sit here and disrespect everything. Like, we said it on the show last week. You cucked my Cody. He's like, I'm not getting <laughs> cucked. Fuck this shit. And he went out there and said, I still have control. It's still my decision. And if yes. you're going to be a bitch, fuck you. I'm taking the match. Like and the Rock didn't like that and slapped the taste out of his mouth. And 
Then we got The Rock in the back swearing at Triple H, saying he'll fucking knock the teeth out of Cody's mouth if he doesn't fix this bullshit. And Triple H is like, you're not going to fucking cuck me either. Nobody's getting cucked by The Rock around here, all right? Triple H Good. came out and said, Cody's getting that fucking match. If you don't like it, too fucking bad. Know your role. It doesn't matter. Shut your mouth. Suck my dick. All that fun <laughs> shit. I have been on a high since that press conference. I wasn't going to watch the press conference. And then I saw the Cody Crybaby stuff happen. I'm like, all right, they're doing something here. They're kind of turning the rock. Like, they're kind of turning the rock heel. Because I, I listened to the, that whole thing on Pat McAfee, and I looked at my wife because he's like, it's it's the guys who are like, oh, you know, your your wife comes up to you and wants to have sex. I, uh, I, we want Cody. I can't right now. I'm like, listen, I don't give a fuck who's main event in WrestleMania, baby. If you come to me and say you want sex, I'm dropping whatever I'm doing. We're having sex. Like, Duh. But also, we want Cody. So, like, call me a Cody Prime, baby. It is what it is. This is fucking great. And I'm invested and I'm excited. And I don't really know what's coming next. I have thoughts and stuff like that of what, what might happen. But I'm excited to see where it goes. It's playing out fantastically. That low, low brought me to high highs. And that is why I love wrestling. And that is why I watch wrestling. So, like, all of this has been fucking fantastic. CM Punk. At the press conference, Biggie saying, too. this is wrestling. If he hits you in the mouth, it's wrestling. Go punch him back in the face because yeah, punch him in the somewhere else. Math and Nickelback have been taking <laughs> some shots <laughs> at one what? CM Punk with these old guys ruining the vibe of blah, 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 blah. So he came out and said, yeah, you know, if. They're being an asshole and they deserve to get punched in the mouth. It's wrestling. Punch him in the fucking mouth. Listen, what I got fired for at the other place. I, I said it on okay Get Show. I said it on Get Show this week. There, you gotta hate the right way. You gotta know how to hate. You gotta be a good hater. Don't don't be those kind, the other kind of haters. The young bucks are the wrong kind of haters. You gotta hate the right way. Drew is doing the the CM Punk hate the right way. He's making money off of it. You would think the Bucks would make money off of this, but they're not making money off of the hate for Punk. Drew is. That's why he's DM Punk. And and uh, Drew has been fantastic. Drew is trolling the fuck out of CM Punk and all of us, <laughs> and it's entertaining as shit. So it props is. to Drew. It is. Oh, Drew. Um, Will or Katie have anything they want to add to this before I go to Will for his next swallow or spit? Um, Rock... Rock shouldn't have been talking shit. Cody's like, I'm fuck you, I'm gonna take his back. And I also would like to say, Roman being like, he talks shit about my family again, we're gonna have problems. You all consistently shit on Dusty every chance you get. What do you mean? What do you mean? Cody said, your grandfather would be disappointed in you. Okay, so you slap the taste out of his mouth? Disres- that's disrespectful. Cody should have beat y'all's ass. And he will. And I can't wait for it. I'll be there. Like I said, rarefied air. Back-to-back <laughs> WrestleManias. Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> that's special. That's a special group to be in. Kryptonite for Dwayne. Will Spitter Swallow. I have another spit uh this is a big picture spit okay and this big picture spit started the week after backlash in 2023 when they announced the world heavyweight championship and then the first thing they did was they said that it would be a raw branded title and then they immediately held a tournament between both brands for this title, which makes no sense because they had just did what, Matt? They had a, the, what did they have right after Backlash? A draft. Brand split, brand extension, whatever the fuck you want to okay. call it. So we're all on the same page here. And then for Elimination Chamber this year, they're taking 12 of the biggest superstars in WWE and they're doing six Whoa. matches over three shows. Mm hmm. They're taking superstars from both brands, one of which is the mid-card champion from the other show, to have a competition for a Raw-branded title in a company that is 
split branded. Talk dirty to me. Make this make fucking sense to me. Somebody do your do your Gen Z thing where you twist it around and make it make sense. <laughs> can I have a crack at this? I would no, love for you. You, you can, but I can tell you right now you're wrong. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I actually kind of had the Elimination Chamber for Seth's title and and all that being a swallow, and I was going to list this part of everything, but I sa- saved it for separately because I had already rambled too much. So I always felt like the Elimination Chamber, especially towards like the later years, was kind of like a last ditch effort for wrestlers to make it to WrestleMania to have a title shot at WrestleMania. It's always kind of been that, but it's never officially been that. I felt like this year where they did half Raw, half SmackDown for the other world title, I liked it because, like, let's say Punk had won the Rumble and Cody did it. This is how Cody gets to Roman, and it's logical because if you now set up the Elimination Chamber to be almost kind of like uh, an equal to the Rumble in the sense where either brand can win this for a world title that would be a a good way to kind of be like this is your last chance it's like a last chance opportunity to have that title match and you're not kind of saddled with the idea of like oh you can only go with raw superstars you can go with smackdown superstars as well so i didn't personally hate it does it make sense kind of sort of it does especially if if it if the idea is to help wrestlers get a title shot that deserve to get a title shot that didn't because they didn't win the Rumble. Like, if it's going to be a pseudo Royal Rumble for the men, I'm all for it. Does it have to be every year? No. But I, I kind of like what they did this year. Cause, but can yes. I, since this was my spit, I'll rebuttal first. No disrespect, Matt. I know it's your show. Okay, one, if you don't want to be saddled into only having to use Raw Superstars, then don't have a fucking brand split. Um, two, you're a publicly traded company with multi million dollar TV deals. Put your aces in your places, use your superstars everywhere. Don't hurt yourself by going. I'm going to split my, my I'm going to take my 200 person roster and I'm going to split it between six different brands. And USA gets their chunk, and CW gets their chunk, and Netflix is going to get their <laughs> chunk. No. Put your aces in your places. Write your stories week to week because they did it for 50 years before the brand split started. So they never had a problem with it. I don't know where Katie stands on this because I wasn't sure when she started watching if she had to fall off and dipped away. But I watched when they first like blurred the lines with these Raw Super Shows where Samantha Superstars would show up on Raw and then it slowly became vice versa. The problem that happened with that was that it was the same people showcased on Raw that were showcasing on SmackDown. So, yes, it's not a proper brand split, but we still still do get s- some exclusives with the with SmackDown and Raw being quote unquote brand splits. Again, is it the end of the world? No. Do I actually like that they're trying to like make the Elimination Chamber be like another Royal Rumble ask title opportunity for wrestlers? I personally do, but I can understand how it just doesn't sit well with with you guys. But the problem with that is, is that is your mental gymnastics justifying it to fit your narrative. Never has it been announced, said, displayed, discussed that the Elimination Chamber is going to be of the same vein of the Royal Rumble where the winner can choose whatever champion regardless of brand or any of that like that's never been a thing and you said they don't have to do it every year but if that's gonna be a thing then they have to do it every year for it to be a thing so wasn't it last year it was the number one contendership for a mid-card title yeah i think wasn't it the number one contendership for the u.s title because everybody thought montez was gonna win it yeah and he should have yeah, oh, well, 100% that. agree, but that's the thing. Like, it changes every wanna... year what's in the chamber, what the chamber match is for. I'm Fair. not going to tell you whether you should or should not like it, Vince. If you like it, you're happy with it, I'm cool with it. I will, I, I will agree, agree 100% with Will because I've been beating this dead horse. 
<laughs> for fucking years on this podcast that they don't have a brand split. They've never had a proper brand split. They don't know how to do it. The writers don't know how to just write stories for the fucking people on their shows. And as soon as one person that they're hinging all of their plans on goes down, they throw it out the window and they just start pulling fucking people in. That's um, what I they would do. Like to say, for the record, I would like to get my two cents out there. Um, it's not just the men they're doing this for, folks. It's the same thing happening with the women right now, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is why Smackdown I'm okay with women, it. Yeah, SmackDown women fighting to get in the chamber for Rhea's title. It's the same thing. I'm just stating that for the record. Thank you. Thank it should you just be Liv versus Rhea for the title anyways. But, that's but no, fine. that makes it <laughs> worse because that makes now it it's a widespread pro- No, it doesn't make it better. It makes it, it worse does make because it now we're doing it on two fronts. Now it, it really means that the brand split means absolutely nothing. There is no brand extension. There is no brand split, period. Because it's not just like they're doing it for one title. They're doing it for both Raw championships across two sets of rosters, the women's roster and the men's roster. So, so okay. I, I, I hear you. I really do. I don't think but, you do, but go ahead. But again, <laughs> my final point I'm going to say about it, and then we'll we'll move on from it. Uh, that would be fantastic. So, it would be. Is, Wait for my next turn. Y'all are really going to love that one. <laughs> oh, like, no. <laughs> Both the men and the women's rumbles, like I said, uh, like again, I'll agree. I'll concede to maybe this is my own mental gymnastics to make it make sense within the kayfabe of their brand split. <laughs> Fine, I'll concede to that. However, the men and women's rumble are both co-branded, and they can choose whatever championship they want. Let's and then the uh, the elimination chamber is the consolation prize, which is the other championship that doesn't get selected. So. That's why I'm okay with it because I actually forgot that the woman actually did that. That was actually one of my points I forgot to write down is that they're doing it with the women too. So if this is going to be a thing that's going to go across both rosters and this is how you determine the champion for the other title that doesn't, doesn't get selected via the Royal Rumble winner, I liked it because now we have clear paths on how to get wrestlers from Raw to SmackDown and vice versa depending on whoever wins the Rumble. You know, you can have your cake and eat it too, so to speak. Like, let's say by some chance uh, we have a 05 Rumble situation where Cody and Punk get eliminated, and but Cody's feet actually touch first, and Punk wins, and he's not supposed to, but he's supposed to challenge Seth. Well, now Cody can go ahead and challenge Roman via the Elimination Chamber. Like, I'm saying that this could be a tool that they could use later on, just like the people in the chat should be using that that bell notification to flick the bean and get notifications when we go live. You know, these are tools that people can use. And even then, we had some fuck, fuckery uh, back in 2016. Oh, uh, Real yeah. quick, since we're we're doing this, we'll get it out of the way. Becky qualified for the chamber. Yep. Bianca Swallow. Belair qualified for the women's chamber. Swallow. Drew defeated AJ Styles and qualified. Sorry. Swallow. for the men's chamber and randy defeated sammy and qualified for the men's chamber Jack Jack looking like a snack can we talk about how dom's in this and he's gonna qualify and he's gonna be in he's the gonna, his ass is gonna fucking lose who's he wrestling kevin owens he's winning yeah he's winning that fucking, that fucking he's winning because logan paul his buddy is gonna come out and help him get that win logan but Paul's he up. He's going to get into the elimination chamber and he's going to get his ass wrecked and he's going to get embarrassed and it's going to be fun as shit. First in the chamber. If he makes I it. hope that Dom wins the chamber, challenges Seth Rollins, wins the title of WrestleMania, just so the world burns. I hope you burn. <laughs> what was the last singles title that Dominic held? North American Championship. That's right, the NXT title. And he's a what superstar? <laughs> He is a global <laughs> superstar. Where was, where was, where was, you, you get my point. Never mind. I'm sorry, Matt. It's your show. <laughs> no, you're fine because we also talked last week about how Damian Priest's best chance of cashing in his money in the bank is going to be for the NXT championship. So, like, <laughs> bisexual taker, NXT champion. <laughs> Which, the fact that Priest said, I don't remember what he said it on, that he can't go after, he can't cash in on Rollins because he's not medically cleared. Bro, that's your perfect opportunity to cash in. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Unless he was told he can't do it because he's not medically clear. Eh, semantics. That's bullshit. Um, 
I think I'm on Vince. I think that was all still Will. Uh, but I, I don't know if I want to do Vince because Vince talked a lot. So, Katie, spit or swallow. Yeah, okay. Hey, that's me. Um, okay. So, stay with me. I'm spitting Carmelo Hayes being a hoe. Now. Are we surprised? I said it on my show. Carmelo Hayes works better as a heel. And he looks damn good doing it. That is true. He ain't got to do trick like that. That's just disrespectful. Um, He came out first. Cock teased us. I didn't get anything. And I was like, well, this is a waste of my time. And then Dragunov being a homie. It's called said, sport play. Bring your ass out. Shut up. <laughs> Dragunov said, bring your ass out here, Mello. Let's talk about this. You ain't got to do trick like that. Dragunov and Mello. Uh, they got beef. Hopefully, maybe at Roblox. We'll see what happens. Um. And then Carmelo Hayes just, like, starts talking shit. That's all you're going to be is a sidekick. No, on, no, on, no. On. It's jealousy. Chain of events. Mello comes out. They boo him. He sits, says not yet. He leaves. He left the fucking arena. Dragon off came like, out, and he's like, get out <laughs> here. <laughs> Let's handle this shit. Mello was out getting his dick sucked uh, in a motel somewhere. Part. Clearing his head. He needed some post nut clarity. I don't think I don't Mello think Mello needed what that post nut. Okay. He needed that post nut clarity to come and talk to these think, fans, right? So he, he expressed himself properly. Meanwhile, Dominic Dijak, who listen, fuck Dominic Dijak. All right. The only <laughs> the last time Dominic Dijak was relevant was when Keith Lee made him relevant in matches against Keith Lee. Since that time and period, I have not given a fuck about anything Dominic Dijak has done. And since Keith Lee has been gone. Dominic Dijak has done nothing to prove to me that he is worth a shit in NXT. Not racist cop Dijak, not fucking whatever the fuck his name was in Ali's group Dijak. None of it has been working for me. They were chanting T-Bar when he came out. Stupid fucking bullshit. Last thing I need is Dijak coming out thinking he gets another shot at Dragunov now that Dragunov gets the title. So, like, go back to fucking Joe Wayne Gacy in a trashed can on a match that nobody wants to watch on a pay-per-view. Like, go back to that. Dijak straight up clocked Dragon off, full on fist to face. <laughs> that shit was rough. Then Mello comes out full post nut clarity, and as Katie said, listen, I'm not saying he was right, but I'm from his from his point of view, devil's advocate. From his point of view, he made a lot of sense in his mind. He's Michael Jordan and tricks Scottie Pippen, and Jordan never let Pippen. Get out of Pippin's role if we're gonna talk <laughs> fucking basketball. No, your role. I don't want to talk Listen, basketball. What here. are we? Ha- what is happening? <laughs> Matt made the basketball reference on the show. I Will don't first. like this. My this point is, is Carmelo said, "Listen, I was talk the star. Me, you were there to support me. You got ahead of yourself. You stepped out of line. I'm just putting you back where the fuck you belong." I don't necessarily agree with him because Trick is fucking fantastic. But from his mindset, I see where he's at. I get why he did Listen. it. It makes sense. It's- By default, hey. if that's Michael and Pippin, does that automatically make Elia Steve Kerr? <laughs> Just by default? <laughs> yeah, it does. Sorry, okay. Katie. I, I took over your thing. Please continue your thoughts on Mello. I mean, that's basically all I was going to say, um, okay. but it's, it's fine. Just Look. go. Well, no, because more, more like sports heel, references you, and shit. Hold on. Hold on. You, you said you love heel mellow. Yes. But you're still spitting him because. I, talking too much shit and did the Shawn Michaels, uh, Bret Hart thing. I don't remember from what year that was, but. <laughs> that was 05, I think, because that's when he started. He turned heel for like a cup of tea versus Hogan at SummerSlam. Why can I hear myself in the background of something? I did. No, I don't. Okay. I I that's heard weird. that too. Um, it's basically like, yeah, like Trick's music plays. And I was like, he bent a chair on Trick's knee. Ain't no way Trick's fucking coming out right now. That's crazy. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm curious to see where this goes, especially with Dijak involved with Dragunov. 
I'm not. Because the mellow no attack. attack. Jack. I, can I finish my thought? Jesus. I'm curious is where this is going to go because Mello attacked Dragonoff after match with Dijak. So, it might not be a triple threat at Santa Deliver. could be a triple threat at Roadblock, which is in less than a month. It's the last thing they have before Santa Deliver. Something has to happen on that because it's the last pit stop or whatever. So, I don't know. I'm, we'll see where the fuck it goes. I disagree. Hold on, with Vince, Katie. Vince, 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 hold on. Before you go, before you disagree, I'm going to stop you right there. We're gonna, I'm going to teach you a lesson here. See, you got you to gotta pay attention to body language, right? Like, I got off on a little tangent. I got a little pop for making a basketball reference. The chat loved it. But I saw that Katie was agitated because she had a point she wanted to make. So I went back to Katie. When you see that Katie's agitated, do not interrupt Katie. You can make faces. You can do whatever fucking... Do not interrupt her. When I interrupt you, you're not agitated. You're not making faces. And if you were, I wouldn't interrupt you. You got to read the room. You got to read body language. You got to pick your spot. And speaking of picking your spot, ladies and gentlemen, patreon.com slash creation world. Pick your spot for $1, whether it's Return to Wrestling, which is Travis and Matt talking WCW. We are in 1998. Our next episode recording next weekend will be bash at the beach so we'll be out this month 1998 main event speaking of those bulls it is hulk hogan and dennis rodman versus carl malone and diamond dallas page in the main event right after the bulls beat the utah jazz in the finals to win the nba championship uh you've also got multiverse with travis and mara where they talk dc animated films so if you're a dc animated film fan for one dollar, you guys can go check that out. And it's the same dollar. You got both shows. If you like both, watch both. If you like one and not the other, watch one. What you should go watch is if you have to ask with me and my wife, Kate. About two weeks from now, we're going to record our next episode. I don't know if we're going to have guests or not. But right now, there's an episode featuring Kate, me, Bridget, and Mara available for you. There's an episode with Kate, me, and Katie available for you. And then there's just, you know, what I like to generally do with my wife, a little one-on-one. Our first episode available for you guys to go check out. Back catalogs for all this available at patreon.com slash creation world. Now, if you go there and you check out the tiers, we offer you guys a bunch of cool shit. Um, one of those things is this show ad free. But since you guys are watching us live, we have some great sponsors. Actually, this is my favorite fucking sponsor that we have that I want you guys to check out. That Travis is going to be here as soon as the Patreon logo goes away to tell you guys about. And there it is. So come listen to Travis tell you about my favorite thing to use in the bedroom, sex toys. I'm going to spice things up in the bedroom. Then it's time to check out Adam and Eve. Because you see, Adam and Eve is the leading adult toy store that offers a wide range of products to help you explore your sexual desires. Whether you're looking for something to use solo or with a partner, they have everything you need to satisfy your cravings. From vibrators to lingerie, bondage gear to lubricants, adamandeve.com has it all and the best part you can shop with confidence knowing that all their products are of high quality and backed by 100 percent satisfaction guarantee that means whether you bought a dildo sex swing penis ring vibrator anal sex toy bondage toy couples toy lube or accessory you can get a refund within 90 days if you're not 100 percent satisfied no questions asked and right now, as a special offer to our listeners, Adam and Eve is giving you 50% off almost any item on their website. That's right, 50% off. And if you act now, you'll also get free shipping. So go to adamandeve.creationworld.com and use the offer code erotica at checkout. That's erotica at adamandeve.creationworld.com for 50% off almost any item and free shipping. Don't wait. This offer won't last very long. The link is in the description. Now, Vince, I'm going to give you an option. You can either choose your spit or swallow or rebuttal Katie. If you rebuttal Katie, after you after your rebuttal, I'm going to go to Will. Or you have your next spit or swallow. So which one would you like to do? Because I can't have you go on back-to-back rants. <laughs> Yeah, no, I kind of figured that those were the options, regardless. Before we when we came back, <clears throat> I'll just drop First it. Spot, it's man. fine. It's fine. Uh, you made 
similar points that I was going to make anyways. You know, and I, I made my points about Mellow, uh, Mellow already on Getcho, so go ahead and check out at Getcho Podcast over there if you want to hear some of my rebuttals to Katie there before she even Shout out to Marks points. with Mikes and Down for the Count. and uh, Great episode. Vince's, fun episode. Vince's True Home to Getcho Podcast. I'm going to swallow if I'm allowed to. Vince, spit or swallow. Thank you. I'm going to swallow the War Dogs winning the Dusty Cups on Sunday at Vengeance Day. And now officially being a tag team with a tag team title match versus the D'Angelo family. And I am riding this War Dog train all the way to the NXT tag team titles. I cannot wait. I love everything that Braun and Baron have been doing. They've been gelling as a tag team. There's genuine chemistry there. This is the most I've been interested in Braun, uh, interested in Braun Breaker since his earlier run when he first started with 2.0. And this is the first time I've cared about Baron Corbin in a long while since, like, maybe bum-ass Baron Corbin, the Wolf Dogs. Sorry. Where did I say? So I said War Dogs. My fault. Wolf Dogs. Thank you. I appreciate the correction. Not perfect, but the Wolf Dogs. Shout out to them. I, I think want them perfect. to win the titles. So, I feel like I was like, oh, like he's 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 shouting out the Wolf Dogs. I know Katie's a fan of the Wolf Dogs because she likes to bark for Braun Breaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look at look at Vince and Katie having a moment, and then I realized this is all just a thinly veiled ruse for Vince to take a shot. At the NXT I'm Tag Team Champions, not family. taking a and shot at the fuck with family. me and fuck with me. We took out OTM. We handled business at Vengeance. You sound like Day. Ted DiBiase Jr. talking we about that restaurant. Fuck put on me. Down. Yeah, he's gonna fuck on me. We're gonna put down the Wolf Dogs. Put them to sleep like vets, and it'll be done. Is the is family that a forever for a champs? Fuck on Forever me. Forever champs. We can't do fuck on me. We you can. know we can't do fuck on me. Yes, we can. No, we can't. I can make it work. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Vince wasn't done. Go ahead, Vince. No, no. So the Wolf Dogs, like I said, I'm, sw- I'm swallowing them as a team because it made the most sense for them to win the tournament. Yeah, you know, uh, this isn't a shot at the D'Angelo family. I was not making the shot. It's like I like these you, guys you, as a you, team, and I would like them to be tag team champions. Unfortunately, the family are current tag team champions. Uh, you guys are tired of Judgment Day being tag team champions. I'm low key tired of the family being tag team champions. Put them on the Wolf Dogs. The family shout will out. Them off. Shout out to Wrestling Bros. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's Bakley. Bear, <laughs> broke ass Baron Corbin. Is going to take the payday over the Honestly, tag titles. Honestly, that would be a great a, a great way to pay off that story, especially since Braun Breaker is is leaving NXT. He's made roster bound, even though he can't choose. Which is contract. why I don't want to see him win the tag team titles. He's picking a contract. He's moving up. Let's not. Give you just him don't want the family to titles the titles on NXT. Period. You just don't, don't, I don't want anyone on the main roster holding titles. Having titles not on their shows. We had a whole conversation yes. about an hour ago. Shots, Shots is going to challenge for the NXT Women's Title. Are you going to tell and me I you're going to be upset? She should not win that match. Are you going to be upset if she actually wins it? She's yes. not going to win though. It doesn't matter if she does in the hypothetical world. Isn't she on SmackDown? Yes, yes. she's a global oh. superstar. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. Well, she she like tweeted at uh, Lyra and like wanted a match because you know everything that happened to. Uh, Vengeance Day, and then apparently it got made official at their one of their house shows this weekend. The only way I would accept, yeah, Will pouring gas because we love him. <laughs> uh, the only way I would accept Shotzi <laughs> winning the NXT Women's Title is if she relinquished her spot on SmackDown and, and went back to, to being a permanent member on NXT, which I honestly would be okay with because then she could host every motherfucking Halloween Havoc like she should. So sure. that I would be okay with, but her being NXT Women's Champion in the way that Becky was. Not okay with. Mm-mm. Not sure. about it. Not about wrestlers on main roster winning NXT championships and carrying them to the main roster and all of that shit, whether it's Dominic Mysterio. Once Damian Priest cashes in, he's on NXT. Judgment, he's not Judgment <laughs> Day anymore. He's NXT bisexual taker champion. That's it. 
anyway. I like you keep you keep adding on to his name like I do with All American Nightmare Dragon, Jake Long, Brian Danielson. Like you keep adding on the way I do. Which and was I love great that. because you weren't here one week and we were doing something and Vince did that, but he did it for the wrong wrestler. It wasn't Daniel Bryanson, it was somebody else. And he's like, whatever Katie calls him. And it was I have I don't even remember who the fuck it was, but I, I just let it slide. I was like, that is not the right person, Vince. That is not the <laughs> All American thing. Nightmare Dragon. It was Jake Cody Rhodes. He gave it to Cody Rhodes because of the American <laughs> Nightmare Party. He's like the American no. Nightmare Dragon, Cody Long, or whatever the fuck Katie calls him. I'm like, that is not the right person. <laughs> no, but okay. A, disrespectful. B, no. Cody has his own. I <laughs> am not going to confirm nor deny that because I have no recollection of the event. However, you show footage, that definitely footage, video footage of the event, I will remember. It definitely I do happens. have a TikTok, and I like to post clips. I can find it. Will, thank you for being patient. Spit or swallow. Oh, here we go. This you guys are gonna be blown away by this. I'm I'm gonna jump to the indies for this one. Um no a big swallow, big swallow here. Um progress wrestling of UK and defy wrestling of Seattle are merging together in what will become the Defy Progress. Defy <laughs> Progress. Um it's gonna be this is the indie wrestling equivalent of UFC and WWE merging together to make TKO, right? This is one of the biggest independent wrestling promotions in the U.S., merging with the second largest indie wrestling promotion in the U.K. So they're what they're doing is this is going to be uh, a locker room share where guys under contract for both companies will now have the opportunity to branch out and go back and forth between the States and England. So it's going to be huge. When you think about it, um, you look at like your Will Ospreys and your Pete Dunn's and your Gunther's. And then when you think of Defy, that's your Nick Wayne's and your Christopher Daniels and some of these guys, your Swerve Strickland's. Uh, Joe Gacy spent some time out there. Christopher like, Daniels wrestles? Yeah. Yeah, he, he wrestled last week on one of the shows. I can't remember which one. He, he was on Probably Rampage or Collision like recently. Yeah, I think he was on Rampage last week. But yeah, so I'm a I'm gonna swallow that. That's huge for indie wrestling. Uh, this could be if done right, and I'll I'll say it now on February 11th. Now it's after uh, 12 a.m. That this could be a viable contender for a big TV deal. Like oh, if yeah. shit were to go south, like the 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 buying power that these two indie promotions together bring together could make them as big or bigger than a GCW which in my opinion is the biggest indie right now. Okay. AR Fox Katie, is a good one. Katie, Katie Will, Vince, I apologize. At least two of you are going to laugh. One of you are going to roll your eyes. So what you're saying is that if WWE TK merger is Shane Diesel in length and girth, that this is like Drake? S still big, just not as meaty. <laughs> Correct. Okay, thank you. Now I understand. <laughs> Jesus. There's I, I I didn't expect you guys to have a whole lot like so yeah. I mean that's cool though. It's, I, it's I think gonna, I saw something hit. about it, but I didn't like dive deep. Like I know both promotions a little bit, but like I didn't like take a deep what? dive in everything. Last word on sports just put up a great article about it by uh Will Gray by me. <laughs> 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 by, by some dude we might know. His name might be Will Gray. I don't know. Never heard of him. <laughs> um I saw something too. I did not come up with the defy progress joke. I got that off Twitter. That's how I knew about it. So That's I saw right. you that can take it and made me chuckle. That's how works. I don't I, listen, I don't steal material. I I, I credit, I got it. I, I somebody else did it. I got it from them. Fair. I'm a dirt sheet writer. I steal material. Literally, get paid to steal material. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're the one dirt sheet writer we like around here. It's not like Dave Meltzer who came comes up with like 15 possible scenarios, none of which are correct, and then pretends like he knew all along what was going to happen. Katie, gonna, swallow. Gonna make, I was going to say, how are you going to make that segue for a second? Because I got real, we get real scared there. I don't know what the fuck you were gonna do. <laughs> um, one. We were talking about that. 
Uh, Don't think about Shane Diesel's cock. Just power through. And... <laughs> oh. I'm going to swallow everything that's going on with Swerve, mustached hangman, and an angry, angry Samoa Joe. Smell Joe is one of the angriest men I've ever seen in my entire life, and it's very cool to watch. Uh, after um, Swerve and Hangman went to a time limit draw, which I knew was gonna fucking happen. I knew it was gonna be a triple threat at Revolution. I'm not mad at that decision by any fucking means because Swerve is on a high. Yes, Matt. On that note, I do yes. understand the character that we're building for Hangman, the uh, anyone but swerve by any means necessary. I just feel like they kind of got the roles reversed there and should have gone to a time limit draw. Hangman should have asked for five more minutes to defeat Swerve, and Swerve should have been like, I ain't giving you shit. I feel like that's where the ro- where the roles made more sense. It was weird to me, of all hey. people, to see Hangman mustachioed Hangman Adam Page be like, nah, bitch. <laughs> I ain't wrestling you for five more minutes. You didn't get it. I'm out. I'm taking the easy way out. He doesn't take the easy way out. That's They're nitpicking. From the outside looking in, since I don't like consistently watch the product, it feels like what they're doing is they're trying to do a double uh, double turn here where Hangman's more of a heel and then Swerve is more of the baby face, which obviously he's getting a great reaction from the crowd. Um uh, Someone explained to me how Swerve can be a baby face now, but his minions are still acting heel. Uh, while you, know, you think about that, while you think about that, Katie, you were talking about an angry Samoa Joe. The angriest of Samoa Joes? Like, there are two Samoans named Joe that we know of. Roman Reigns is one, and he ain't do shit this past week. He shut his mouth. And then you have Samoa Joe. Angry man. Very angry. Pissed off he has to defend his title in a triple threat. Pissed that no one won the match. He shouldn't have to defend his title. He should be champion forever. And da, 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 da. Angry man. I like the angry man. I have anger issues. So, like, I understand. I get it, Samoa Joe. I get it, my guy. And it's gonna... We have a contract signing next week. And they're gonna kill each other. And it's gonna be bloody. And I might have to watch Revolution. <laughs> Vince, yes. Back to you. <laughs> Babyface swerve, heel minions. You got an answer. I uh, I can't make any logic behind it. I'm not booking that. I'm just saying it seems like that's what they're doing. However, that is a fair point. Uh, blame Nicholas and Matthew for this shit. And it's they're math and Nickelback. The- <laughs> math and Nickelback. That makes sense now. I didn't get it the first time you said that. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know. I'm not feeling mustache hangman, and I, I feel like I've soured on hangman ever since he, he never took up the asses chaps wrestling gear concept. Oh, Captain, Thank Rhea, you. Rhea did it, so that's why she's, she's mommy. You know, I, I've given up on, on hangman showing the cheeks. I don't care anymore. Because he's growing his mustache. He's gonna have to get time to show the cheeks. He's growing his mustache. He looks he's ugly got, with the stash. I think he his, looks his, he looks crazy. It's perfect. He's a deranged. He looks like a cowboy. He looks like he Dutch looks, Mantel. He looks like Magnum TA. No, he looks like everyone Dutch thinks Mantel. his final form is. Will's either saluting the tribal chief or has something to say. I have something to say. <laughs> Vince, when you were talking about the someone explained to me how Swerve can be a baby face now, but his minions are acting a hill, and you were talking about the double turn, you were answering that question while you were explaining that because, in theory, the Bucks and Hangman were baby faces. Okay, the Bucks left and came back heels. Hangman hasn't made that turn yet. The same swerve as a hill and hasn't made the full baby face turn yet. You describing the double turn in theory coming would explain while baby face uh, swerve has those tendencies while his faction is still a hill faction. You were explaining yeah, it without realizing it. You're well, smarter than you even know. <laughs> 
I wasn't trying to do anything. <laughs> I wasn't even answering the question. I was just saying, like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to take credit for that. I wasn't trying to do shit. God, these but you did it. You answered the question. You did it. You Louis are a, wants, we did listen, it. You may not be a sexy beast like Ritter, but you are the salt of a spitter swallow, and you are a smart, smart boy, and I'm very proud of you. You, you handled that business. You're very you condescending when you want to be. I'm not being kind of. I'm putting you over. <laughs> sure. I'm not the one. Listen, no, that's a different show. We don't. Listen, we don't go. We don't Ivan, that. Ivan specifically called me a sexy beast and not you. That 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 was he not did. on me. It's on the screen. It's okay. Oh, so and all and, and so did Tim. So what's up? The Tim? amount of flirting Tim? that happens on this show, men on your show not too. aimed at the only female is insane. Men love me. Specifically, men two on the show right me. now. Men do love you, and you love women and men. Bisexual era, bitches. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't even know whose turn it is. It's Vince. Vince, or no, it's we did Let's Vince, then we did Will, then we did Katie. So, yes, it's Vince. Vince, bitter swallow. Let's see here. I am going to go ahead and spit. Bailey possibly trusting Dakota Kai this week on SmackDown. It's she seems skeptical. There was some reluctancy. If the story is that Dakota didn't really know, I call bullshit. Because if there's one person, like obviously there's a lot of people you can't really trust. But if there's one person in the women's division you can't trust, it's Dakota Kai. She turned on Tegan Knox. She turned on Raquel Rodriguez. She turned on who else? She turned on someone else. I'm forgetting who else she's turned on, but she's she's has history of turning on people. Obviously, she's going to turn on Bailey. Bailey last week, well, actually, yeah, this past Friday, said that she's too smart. She's had this happen to her in the past. She knows better. Yeah, Dakota tried to it made the save and made it seem like she was going to hit Bailey, but then attacked Eo, then the rest of the Kabuki Warriors. Um, yeah, I'm spitting that if that's where we're going, where like. Dakota is the final swerve. It's like, no, you shouldn't trust Dakota, Dakota, period. So if if that's where they go, they're going to backtrack a little bit of the whole Bailey knew this whole time type of thing. Um, And all the goodwill they they received on my end for that. But I'm also spitting the fact that there is no Bailey or EO on Thursday. Like, what the fuck? That's one of your Rumble winners. Like, not only did you know that Bailey was going to win the Royal Rumble and didn't have her on the poster, but now she's not even featured on this presser with EO or anything. Like, there's no love for Bailey except for CM Punk, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm I'm spitting that aspect of it. Agree. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, listen, Bailey's got to have someone in her corner. Even though it might be the it might be the Lulu of Bailey, uh, to think that Dakota actually is like her friend. I hope. You no, know, she's not. I hope she doesn't actually believe it, and it's more it was, of a. She, she looked skeptical. She was hopeful. like, "I don't necessarily trust you." She kicked that chair out the fucking way. She said, "Don't come near me with that fucking thing." Mm-hmm. I don't. <sighs> it's gonna be one of those things where, like, it's, it's Dakota's gonna turn very close to mania if she does which she more than likely will and then it's bailey versus the world which is kind of what we want that's what i want and we get paramore for mania that's all i guess <laughs> mania, night one ia bailey paul can catch hands <clears throat> i want to see bailey be smarter than she's been perceived this whole build we got a hint of that when she basically said i know what's been going on this whole time (laughs) i'd like to see bailey pretend to let dakota in and not give dakota the chance to turn on her to be one step ahead of damage control because she's the people she's the person that built damage control yeah i'd love to see it too i'd love to see the same shit with emma down at nxt storytelling bailey bailey Emma tried to like act like she was her friend and then like did some shady shit and then, like still tried to be her friend and Bailey like held her in for a hug because the crowd was like hug it out and then she oh like, yes and then, boom, and then hit her with the Bailey the belly. belly. I remember now cinema, which cinema. we might get with Dakota Kai. 
once she's medically cleared. <laughs> she, she said she's she there. running. Close. She was she running. Could, I, have, she, I haven't seen her run. She tweeted that she is very close to being cleared, like legitimately. So, well, Liam, according to Bakley, she is cleared. cleared. Well, then Which she is why she was swinging chairs was. and sprinting. Well, that's it, they got to keep kayfabe. Yeah. But, like, that's your fucking knee, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Will, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified, but spit or swallow. <laughs> I'm going to gargle undecidedly. Okay. Okay. AEW Dynamite. Okay. And this faux invasion angle that they're playing with CMLL. Like mm-hmm. they did the the trios tag match or the six man tag or whatever it was, and then all of a sudden, like half of CMLL's roster is on dynamite. I think it was this past Wednesday that happened. But yeah. it's I get why it's happening, and Tony Khan wants to to help CMLL the way he's helped AAA and the way he helped Impact and the way he's helped New Japan and all the things he does where he has these working relationships. <laughs> What has, has, has he really helped though? Because from what I've noticed, he has these relationships, and then he takes some of their stars, and then he cuts off ties with the company. And <laughs> in my opinion, they're not really better off after Tony leaves no. them than they were. No, they're not. I don't think he's helped at all. I'm just conf- like, look, I'm not going to ever complain about mass luchadors on my television screen. Unfortunately, it's on Dynamite. And I don't, and so it's not on my television screen. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me why they were just bringing that. It just kind of seems like, oh, we're going to do CMLL versus Blackpool Combat Club. And just because. Well, that was yeah. the beginning of the invasion angle because then you had Drill Matic hop the barricade and go out to save his brother. Uh, not Dragon Ball E, but the other one I can never remember. Trilistico. Um, no, that's dramatic. I said that. Roosh? The other one. Oh, is Roosh the other brother? Ru- it's Roosh, Dralistico, and Dragon Dragon Lee. Okay, so okay, big time rush. No, he wasn't out there then. Well, he jumped the dr- dramatic jumped the barricade to go save somebody. Um, some of his comrades. And they, they started this invasion angle. They played it up with Mystico, which I'm pretty sure at one point was no face uh in WWE. Um, or at least a version of No Face somewhere. The original one, the correctly. one that botched all the time, yeah, the not orig- the one the that original drew no face. soda cans at Chris Jericho. Yes. That's the one that was. Um, <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Like, like we'll see where it goes. Um, they did beat beat up John Moxley, so, like, that was kind of cool because John's one of the big stars. They beat up John Moxley a lot the past few weeks. Which... I I don't remember. It was when they were getting ready to do the first um, Forbidden Door. They tend to come out and just beat the shit out of John Moxley too. Like Tom it's... Riddle has a child. What? Hey, what? V- Voldemort Junior. I believe. W- w- no. What? no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, close. I close. think <laughs> fakely you meant to say Vo- Volador Junior. God, Voldemort Jr. <laughs> is what I read. <laughs> so much I for Bakley about. being the man of a thousand words. Is Bellatrix Lestrange the mom? I, I've got questions. I mean, yeah. probably. Let's be honest. Um, no, it's the same shit they did with New Japan and Forbidden Door. You said someone come out, beat the shit out of John Moxley, build to a thing. And then they slowly start disappearing after the fact. It's a magic trick. Fucking okay, illusions. Over it's there. not a magic trick. Voldemort Jr.'s out there, motherfucker. It's real magic. <laughs> Hogwarts Jr. letter verified fucking magic. A. I need Wingardium and Leviosa as a tag team. <laughs> I can't stand you. I can't stand you. Honestly, we can bring we can yeah. bring Raven back, put him in a mask, call him Ravenclaw. I'm in. Say less. Hufflepuff? We can do Hufflepuff. Uh, I mean, Hufflepuff is, is essentially just 
RVD. <laughs> Save good money at Menards RVD. and uh, Angelo oh. Parker. Yeah. Ilya Dragunov right. would be a Slytherin. I feel like that would be a given, like right no, off the No, that'd rim. be Randy Orton. All those, all the snakes and dragons go in Slytherin. That's just how that's going to yeah. go. New Japan has a partnership with fucking Hogwarts. Wait, what is going on? Baby? Yes. I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> New Japan has a partnership with CMLL. This is amazing. AEW has I'm gonna a partnership. I'm going to start watching New Japan if they're whipping out wands and shit. They are. <laughs> And CMLL has a relationship with New Japan. So those three are in bed together. Triple A and CMLL can't work together at all because they hate each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have know we why. had a Nevada Cadaver match yet? We are about to have <laughs> a Nevada. Yeah. Oh my God. This is going really went off the rails. I'm creating a whole fucking Harry Potter wrestling league. So instead of death matches, you got Nevada Cadaver matches and all sorts of We shit. had. An entire like month where something in wrestling got related back a to Diagon Harry Alley Potter. Street Fight. A Diagon I, Alley Street Fight. I.e. <laughs> Drew McIntyre with the Sword of Gryffindor. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's all fucking there, guys. He's got looks at the clues. Here, ladies and gentlemen. Blues clues mm -hmm. over in this bitch. I love how like I am being the least serious, but we've got Ivan and Bakley just in the chat spouting off. Like, Actually the most talking factual. information. Like, if you guys really want to know what the fuck's going on, go watch the live stream, read the chat, because they have the real. And now Bakley's on board. Quidditch rules match. Um, <laughs> Evan was like, this is the point when I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, they're Evan. fantasy booking Harry Potter. I'm out. <laughs> Ironically enough, like they're on different live stream chats, so they can actually interact with each other, which is the funniest thing. He's a ventriloquist. Magic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, now they're real, booking guys. me in a street fight. I'll take on Hagrid. You know, big <laughs> meanie man slapping me, baby. Oh my god. Meanie man invitational. Yeah. Put Hagrid in the Meaty Man Invitational. Anyway, we got way yeah, off the rails. That was Will, <laughs> Katie, Spitter Swallow. How do we, how do we even go back? How do we come back from that? I don't even That's know. That's going to stop giving me turns. <laughs> 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 You're cut off. Oh, though. God. Um, I'm going to swallow everything Timeless Tony Storm. And De uh, Deanna Perazzo, or Deanna Pilato, as Tony's called her many <laughs> times. Um, Tony is fantastic. I love everything that she's doing right now. She had a match on Collision tonight against... Uh, I can't remember who. I didn't write it down because I forgot. Uh, but after she won the match, she was laying in the ring and cutting a promo. She's a new... Uh, short movie coming out next week called Wet Ink, which is probably a contract signing, if you are aware. Write um, that down, Wet Ink. <laughs> Episode title? Yeah. We have four <laughs> options already. Um, so yes, I need to spell I-N-C, like Wet Incorporated. Okay, it's a C now. Jesus. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but it's just everything with this. They're both putting on fantastic fucking matches and like giving people phenomenal opportunities. Queen Amanada has fought both Tony and Deanna. Kira Hogan fought Deanna tonight. Tony, I think, fought Queen Amanada tonight too. I don't know. There's just a lot going on with these two women specifically in the women's division. Julie Hart's doing some spooky shit. With Sky Blue. I saw that. that. I watched. It was the only thing from Rampage I gave two fucking shits about. I watched that whole fucking show and it was trash until Why? that tag yeah. match. Watch it until the end, exactly. Because I, I was in a good mood. I was still riding the CM <laughs> Punk high or the uh, Cody Rhodes high <laughs> from the press conference, and I'm like, let me give Rampage a watch because they at least are going to have one women's match. I'm going to give a shit about main event: mm -hmm. Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. Mm -hmm. Ruby and Soraya. Ruby said, "Fuck Soraya." Bounced. Finally, Sky Blue, who you know we love round here, shows up, uh -huh. staring down Willow. Willow's like, "Yeah, okay, what? We were friends. Now, fuck you." Lights go out. Boom! I got a tag team partner, TBS champion, by her side, and I am all for a Chris Statlander, Willa Nightingale versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue match. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. And we're getting half of that on 
Dynamite. We're getting Sky Blue and Willow for the first time in AEW. <clears throat> That's true. Ruby did get a secret letter. Probably from Angela being like, it's Soraya's fault. Fuck yeah. her. Because Soraya's a nothing but a bitch trying to cock block Ruby. Like, let her live. Sure. Like, fuck that. But no, women killing it. And I didn't even talk about this. Uh, big business being um, a thing. March that's actually 13th. My next, uh, my next spit. Oh, please talk about it because it's fucking mess. I need to have the proper authority. <sighs> Why well, said point? Once, once you get your turn, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, this will be our last round. So, Vince, better swallow. Oh, uh, this is my last thing. Yep. Okay. Okay, I get it, but I get one more after this, right? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to spit, and I'm spitting this with the question mark if it happens. Monet being all elite, Mercedes Monet obviously heavily rumored to be going to AEW. Um, she did not show up at the Royal Rumble, so that's one pit stop. She could have showed up. Obviously, Trinity Naomi did show up. The reason why I'm spitting it, and it's because I don't trust Tony Khan. I don't trust AEW booking with the women's division, with the exception of a few outliers here and there. Like, look at Britt Baker. What the fuck are they doing with Britt Baker right now? And she was their top star. I wouldn't be surprised if six months from now, Timeless Tony Storm is no longer being showcased, and Tony Khan's bored with her, and she's going to toss her to the side and then focus on someone else um mercedes monet could she help the division sure but aw at least for me as a consumer of wrestling in general you, you've had wrestlers show up there and just kind of feel like guys like like it's the biggest example being edge showing up and just being adam copeland and he's just kind of feeling like a white dude from canada with blonde hair that shows up and wrestles in jeans sometimes he doesn't really feel like the radar superstar edge anymore. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm just very protective, very cautious of what they're going to do with, with Sasha, with Mercedes. I don't want to see her in all elite, but uh, that's well, kind of where I'm spitting it. I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it's going to work out in the long run. And I'd rather just not see it happen. Let her keep wrestling stardom and elsewhere, but don't, don't join I think that's a question for you. Yeah, hold on, Vince. Let me ask you this. What are they going to do with Diana Parasso after she Lazo. loses to Parasso? <laughs> what loses to Tony? Tony, then what? I, that's a good question. What are they going to do with Diana Parasso? She'll They're probably a They're going to toss her to the side. They did that with Thunder Rosa. Like, toss her to the side. Like, that's what they do. They have one favorite that they. Fucking milk until they're until Tony Khan is done with them, and I'm like, okay, I'm bored with you now. It's the Andy from Toy Story meme where he drops Woody. Like, I don't want to play with you anymore. That's who Tony Khan is with the women's division. Counter argument to that: um, it was Mercedes. It was her choice. This yeah. is the choice that she made for whatever reason. This is the choice that she made, and I think a lot of it has to do with. I don't, I don't necessarily know it was that. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that she wants to be Mercedes Monet, that she is building a brand, she is doing this, and WWE is not going to let her do that. They're going to want her to be Sasha Banks. That's who they, their fans know her as. That's who they want her to be. So That's if this is the place that, well, it doesn't matter what you want or what WWE wants, and all that matters is what she wants because it is yeah. her life, her character, her story. So, like, this was her choice. She, I guarantee you, more than us, is well aware of the booking decisions for the women going on over there. I don't know what Tony promised so. her the kind of money, but in the end, this was her decision. I'm not going to spit her making her decision. Um, I will give Tony Khan, Koki Khan, a slight bit of credit um, because this was pending the debuts that people are talking about, either one or both, because um, the coin drop thing, that's for Okada, right? That, that's yeah. his thing. So yeah. That, yeah. that would coins drop money drops make it rain that all makes sense for big business uh, as well as monet uh, rainmakers make it rain yes make it rain is money anyway um it was actually kind of a major announcement because 
we're all expecting that. If he does not deliver on that again, it'll then be <laughs> it'll be not only funny, but a huge fucking flop and a giant spit. I'll but if swallow he does that. On it, I'll swallow that. If there's no Mercedes Monet, there's no Kazuchika Okada, I will fucking swallow Tony Khan making a major announcement just to get people thinking it's going to happen and then it doesn't happen. Uh, like I said, I didn't. I don't. I don't necessarily in spitting her making the decision. I'm just spitting that that's going to be an outcome that I'm not happy with. Whatever, that's what she wants to do. Like, I might be able to see her more often. I might tune in just for those segments alone and only those, and we'll see what happens. Maybe she can help elevate that division and help Tony Khan care more about women's wrestling as a whole more. So that would be a positive. I will say this. If she goes back to WWE, I don't see anything interesting that she could really do that she hasn't already done. She's accomplished almost everything in WWE. She could retire right now and be in the Hall of Fame. But she doesn't want to. And it, yeah. <laughs> She doesn't want to. So that's why. Like, I Go to TNA. Go to, go to, go to the NWA. She doesn't go to want to. Too. She does not want to. She wants Nobody to wants to go to the NWA, wants. especially as a women's wrestler. Yeah. Camille's still looking for a fucking job. She couldn't Camille get said, out of there fast enough. <laughs> Camille said, fuck them. They've done oh, no yeah. favors for the Burke. Uh, also, Osprey's not a debut because I've seen him on AEW television a million times. Side I do note. have two cents um, to throw in on the, the Monet stuff, too. WWE, uh, Sean Ross put on Fightful that WWE, his source told him, they said, we're not in the business of contract tampering, so you won't have a Sasha Banks return at the Rumble. Meaning, if WWE said they're not in the business of contact, contract tampering, that means somebody else has her locked in for at least a series of dates that included be the Royal Rumble and beyond. So she's debuting somewhere. We just don't know where. March it's not going to be WWE, because. though. We know it's not WWE right now. GCW. Right now. And Bakley's been defending Tony Khan's booking of women in the chat, which, while still suspect because we get one match a show. Some, um, well, on the main yeah. show, on Dynamite, the one that everyone actually watches and gives a fuck about. One match. Um, he has been booking more women's matches and in high pro higher profile spots, like the Tony Deanna stuff. Again, Rampage, nobody fucking watches it. I tuned in. That's where we're getting the stuff that I care about with Sky Blue and all that. Um, more stuff on Collision. So there is hope for the women's division that he might actually put some effort into it. Mercedes comes. We'll see. Will, spit or swallow? My last spit for the night, and I'm bringing it back after almost a year, it's Anime DX. <laughs> um, I've decided I'm going to anytime the the young bucks make a hill turn and they're being dastardly hills, I'm going to call them anime DX. Um, this time specifically, the spy versus spy, Bizarro, <laughs> Matt and Nick with the the South Park goatees, like Matt, Math and Nickelback, Math and yeah. Nickelback, you know, Deerman or whatever their names are. They're God given names. Math yeah. and Nickelback. If they were in WWE, they would be Math and Nickelback Deerman. Um, but I don't like this version. And then especially getting the tag titles on Darby and Sting just so we can see it happening at Revolution. Like it makes my stomach sour that Math and Nickelback Deerman are going to be three time AEW tag team champions. <laughs> side swallow for me um i have always been a fan of seeing wrestlers who have given everything whether it's a family or a specific wrestler to this business finally get their flowers i know it wasn't something sting really wanted but seeing him hold a championship in AEW, so he's now except for wwe who disrespected the fuck out of him held a championship in every company that he has worked in uh shout out to them for that um i'm not a huge fan of that tag team but i am happy to see sting do his thing and win a tag team title there also sting's one son smash <laughs> i don't know which, i don't know their names but the one that was on the left 
Him. Smash. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> Katie, spit or swallow. Oh man, I think I gotta. I think I gotta make my my good one here. I'm swallowing Jay Uso in Big Goon. I'm so excited for this shit. And now, personally, I would have loved if we got like. You know, the New Day got, like, beat up three-on-one. And, you know, Uso, shout out, made the save. Would have, you know, deep down would have loved Biggie. But it's fine. Once Biggie's okay, I need him to come back. Um, But I love the idea of Uso and Goon. Yeah, Jimmy's gonna screw Jay. That's what they do. They're brothers. They're gonna piss each other off and then we're gonna get Brothers a screw brothers all the time. No! In the not what I said. <laughs> That's going to fuck up some algorithms, bro. <laughs> or is it? Stop. I feel like, I feel like our said. audience, I feel like that audience, that idea, and men wrestling around in their underwear are two things that, you know, might... Uh, regardless, back to my main point, Goon... 600 plus days, IC champion, as he should be. Shout out to Gunther. Um, Jay Uso, who has had a tremendous year, he had a lot of highs, very, very, very many lows. I wouldn't necessarily be mad if Jay was the one to dethrone Big Goon. Definitely should have been Chad Gable, but that's besides the fucking point. And this match is gonna be good. That's all I need. I'm excited, I'm invested because the new day's got. Jay's back, they're homies. And again, I can't have Big E, so like I'll take Jay as the third man in the new day. Okay. Vince, your mic is muted. Oh, sorry. Uh I'm glad Katie mentioned the big Gunth and Jay Uso segment because that was one of the best things on Raw. Uh Jay Uso is gonna take that title off of Big Gunth. He's gonna be the one. Side shout out to uh, our boy Adam Cole and that whole Undisputed Kingdom thing for fucking up Chuck Taylor for not wearing Chuck Taylors. I feel like that was the reason <laughs> behind it and love them for that. Uh, teach that man a lesson. Um, also, <laughs> Roxanne, Lola Vice had a great match on NXT. Tatum Paxley shows up. She's carrying the breakout tournament contract because she's fucking crazy. Love, love that. Um, and we're getting Jada versus Rizzo next week. Jada asked for it. We're getting it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Katie. Oh, and big swallow our truth because fucking our truth. Like Always. he just decided he stole the judgment swallow. day and they just said, fuck it. it. Whatever. And then he showed up on SmackDown and was talking to Kevin Owens thinking he's the Miz and then talking about Nick Aldis and Kevin Owens like, oh, you mean Nick Mysterio? No, Nick Aldis. Our truth is the best thing in wrestling point blank period. And I want nothing but good things for that man in his everyday life. Katie, what was uh, your favorite show you watched this week? I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, let's go. Let's go. SmackDown, I guess. Sure. Will? TNA Impact, Thursday night. Two weeks in a row. You didn't even swallow anything from the show. <laughs> it was this is the thing right now and this is the issue i have the same thing with nwa is with them being pre-tapes um you you almost always find out about spoilers ahead of time so i knew a lot of the results before the episode came out they're banger matches i could just say swallow tna it's the bet arguably the most consistent 90 minutes in wrestling outside of nxt also isn't trinity like still on their show <laughs> Yeah, dude, she was there on Thursday night. She wrestled. She was on WWE TV and on TNA Impact TV on the same week. So shout out fucking like Rick Ruth. Like that's who Naomi <laughs> is now. Like <laughs> live TV and pre-tape TV in the same week. Shout out. That's dope. Uh, I'm also gonna go SmackDown solely based on Triple H making my my dreams come true. Um best for business, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm not talking about corporate wwe what's gonna sell to wrestlemania is fucking sold out you're not selling fucking tickets all right 
is going to be sold out regardless. You can have no fucking matches announced, and WrestleMania is going to sell the fuck. They out. sold it out without any matches being announced. Exactly, my point. Long ticket before yeah. matches were sold. Vince said SmackDown's best show. Matt says SmackDown's best show. Katie says SmackDown's best show. Will says the show that he did not talk about one single bit tonight <laughs> is the best show. TNA Impact. Uh, Will, since you're here, please tell everyone where they can find you. First and foremost, as always, Mateo, thank you for the invite. I love being the honorary use of all things uh, creation world. If you're interested in my shenanigans elsewhere, check my link tree at the Will Gray. You'll find everything that I do for Rivet City Radio, Botch Watson, Share Shots off the top media, and my writing profile for Last Word on Sports. Katie? Yeah, you can uh, follow me on Twitter, Katie Rasson13, link to my bad to y'all, thanks, Julie Showcase, twitch.tv slash Julie Showcase, and youtube.com slash Julie Showcase. Typically, there's a 6 p.m. Eastern ish. Uh, to my knowledge, we have our guests this week, unless he cancels on me again, so we'll fucking find out. Um, Patreon.com slash Julie Showcase. I do want to start more doing, doing more stuff on there, but I've been sick for like three weeks so i want to wait until i'm a little better and i've heard back from a few people about some inside the mind of stuff that i'm gonna do next month things are cooking over here better than the rock and roman's been cooking for two years <laughs> like crack in the kitchen no 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 <laughs> no <laughs> okay <laughs> You guys can follow Quiet. Vince since he had to take a call uh, <laughs> at SES Vince on all socials. Also, go check out the Get Show podcast. Uh, Vince is a a host over on the Get Show podcast. Him and Just have a great show over there. They recently just had JTG from Marks with Mikes and Tiffany from Down for the Count. So go check out their latest episode. Shout out to them, Vince. Don't even come, Vince. I'm plugging your shit. Don't even bother coming back. I'm no uh, fuck. Go ahead. <laughs> No, continue to plug me. Ew. On all social medias, at SES Vince, uh, I'm sure he's saying he's going to try and do something about basketball with uh, his friend, but it's not going to happen because he doesn't really have that podcast anymore. Um, I did release content on my YouTube, youtube.com slash SES Vince. Go ahead and turn on the bell notifications, subscribe over there, and comment down below. Tell me everything. Most importantly, you can follow me at Matt Rose at M-A-T-T-R-I-D-D-E-R for your wrestling content at Getting Off for your horror content. That's on Twitter. Everywhere else on Smack and Raw. If you want to see more of these, just follow Creation World everywhere. CreationWorld.com. Get your links to all of our shit. Uh, as the chat has told you, I am a sexy beast. You should want to see as much of me as possible, uh, clothed and otherwise. So go follow all of our socials and mine for the host of the Sheely Showcase, the host of Box Spots and Chair Shots, and the co-host of the Get Show Podcast. I am the host of Smack It Raw, the patron state of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter. This has been your number one wrestling podcast on places where you can find people having sex on the internet.